Uh, hi, welcome to tutorial number two. My name is Tom Antos. Um, I have a bit of a cold today or some allergies, I'm not even sure. So you might hear me sneeze or uh, or cough or something every so on. Um, anyways, um, in this tutorial we're going to do kind of a se setup for a music video uh, performance shot. It's a very stylized kind of lighting setup uh, that kind of works for music videos. Uh, I will be doing other tutorials where I kind of talk about different different lighting setups and that kind of thing, but I will go over it briefly right now. Uh, the way that I see it, uh, there's really three styles of cinematography out there. First is this very stylized look that we're doing in this tutorial. Uh, it's used in a lot of music videos and some films like uh, Armageddon or um, Pearl Harbor, for example, both films directed by Michael Bay, a guy who actually comes from a music video background, which is probably the reason why his films look that, like that. Second lighting style is very um, it's a naturalistic, but it, uh, but it's uh, still uses a lot of light, like intricate lighting setups to try to simulate a lot of things that happen naturally in in the real world. Uh, one cinematographer that comes to my mind is Janusz Kaminski. Uh, he did, he works with Spielberg a lot, so he did um, Saving Pride Ryan. He also did one really cool film that didn't get a lot of exposure. It's called The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. Really nice cinematography. Check it out. Uh, and then the third lighting style is this bare bones kind of minimal minimalistic kind of thing where you're just using available light. Uh, a good example of that is a film called A New World starring uh, Colin Farrell. Um, the director there and the cinematographer both just use only natural light uh, and it's actually a really great looking film but uh, and, and it's kind of what I what I did in this music video here with Christopher Charles. Uh, but a lot of people mistake it and they think it's just it's easy to do because uh, because you have no lights to worry about. And when in fact you actually have to do a lot of homework beforehand and you have to scout locations, write down what time of the day or of the year uh, does does the sun set or rise or or you know illuminate a certain part of the set. And um, anyways, I'll talk about that in, in another tutorial. And in my thoughts somehow I let us slide But you never did, you held us high uh, So anyways, let's begin working on this shot. Uh, it's a simple music video performance shot. Really all we care about is seeing Chris uh, uh, sing the song and play the guitar a bit. Uh, and since I don't really like how that room looks, I kind of decided uh, that I'm going to keep it pretty much low-key. Uh, keep the keep the background almost dark, especially after when I do color correction. I know I'm gonna crush the blacks, and that will be kind of dark. And uh, but I don't want it to look flat, obviously. And you know, big thing in, in just making shots look nice is kind of giving them that kind of contrast. And you can do it through different things, through you know, different colors that kind of you know contrast each other, or through lights. And in this example, I'm gonna use mainly the lights. So here, uh, this is just you know the r normal lighting there in, the, in that room, and here you can see me turn on one of the lights. This is a 100 no 1000 watt uh, redhead, uh, just a simple tungsten you know light. And right away you can see like when I sh when I pointed at Chris, it, it it makes him a lot brighter than the background, so which allows me to bring down the exposure of the shot and kind of throw the background right away into uh, into darkness. Um, here I'm see me moving the light around, just kind of trying to find best angle for it. And uh, once I like the position of the light, which is just uh, to the left of the, of the camera, um, and slightly above Chris's uh, eye line, which gives you this kind of a nice shadow there, you know, uh, under the nose and that kind of thing. But it makes you know this way I make sure that I we can see his eyes. Um, and right away you can see it looks kind of a lot more interesting. Uh, I don't like that painting though that's in the painting or picture that's in the background. So I had that removed. And another thing that, you, that I noticed right away of course is that basically Chris blends in with the background because the right side of his face is completely dark. And especially once I color correct it I know it's going to be it's going to be pretty much black there. And since the background there is black it just, he just kind of blends in. You don't see his shoulder, you don't see really the right side of his face. So the uh, best way you can do this, and this is just again standard lighting, I'm gonna do more tutorials where I do a lot more complex lighting setups, but this one is basic. Like I said, I'm gonna be pretty much using two lights. Uh, and so that one light I see on him, we'll, we'll call it the key light, is lighting his face. And now I'm gonna throw another light behind him to the right side of the camera, and right away you'll notice that it just helps separate Chris from the background. It adds a little bit of a rim light, 
on his shoulder, on his ear, his hair, um, and he just kind of stands out. And this, these are the kind of things that you gotta pay attention so that you make the shots have a bit more depth, basically. Uh, in, in, like I was saying in tutorial number one, you, you kind of do it through the use of the you know depth of field and uh, and just kind of your framing and, and the deciding what you want to put in, in the shot. And so in here right away, uh, you see that the background is thrown out of focus a little bit. I put that rim light around him, uh, which kind of helps him separate from the dark background, um, but still keeps this kind of a dark tone. It's still like you know half of his face is is is, is dark. You see me here turn on and off the light, and you see the difference that it makes. So, it's pretty big. Now the next thing that I do is I put little lights behind him. These lights don't really light him; they don't actually affect him at all. All that these lights do is they help give you extra contrast to the shot. And another thing is that I I know I'm gonna use a streak filter to add those streaks that you see in a lot of music videos. And these this way these lights will uh, will kind of kind of help me create those extra streaks that you would see. Uh, then I, I, I keep on adjusting the lights behind him, kind of changing the intensity of those lights. I actually put in, because uh, originally I had 60 watt light bulbs, and I put in, I think, 200 watt light bulbs in there, just so it's a bit more of a punch, you know, more of a noticeable light. I put some, um, uh, I put some tin, f I put some black tin foil around those lights too, to kind of make those lights a bit more of a pointy kind of a cone shape. And next thing I do is I bring Chris closer to the camera because I want to throw the background even more out of focus. Uh, and I kind of readjust the key light and that, that rim light that's behind him a little bit more. Just, just kind of fine tune the angle of it. Um, and right away now when you look at it, it's just... It's, I, yeah, it's, a, it's more interesting than it was before. It might not be the, mo the world's most beautiful looking shot, but it's, you know, it's more interesting than, than for sure than what we started with. Uh, another thing that I do is I, I put the camera on a dolly and just move the camera left and right a little bit to add some movement so that this way we also have the, the streaks coming in, in and out of the frame um, and just kind of you know, adds a bit more life to the shot. But right away I, I, I see that even though the camera moves you don't notice the movement as, as much and that's because there's really nothing in the foreground to give you a sense of, of the fact that the camera is actually moving. Um, so, uh, like I said, since this is a, a music video shot, the things don't really need to make sense in it. I basically just put some random object in the foreground, and it's totally in, in the in the shadow, so you don't even really see what it is. It's, it's out of focus, but it just makes you m aware of the fact that the camera is actually moving, and it's like a nice way to reveal uh, Chris's face as the camera goes in, you know, from behind the object and, uh, and in front of him. And uh, and then the next thing I do is uh, is color correction. Um, kind of straightforward simple and uh, I think with the color correction now and, and, uh, and everything it, it's a pretty nice interesting shot I mean t take a look for yourself so yeah like I said it's pretty cool but still to me I was looking at it and I thought I can maybe maybe play around to something more and not all of you will like this and you know like I said that's just a matter of opinion there's, uh, there's a million different ways that you can do shot a shot like this for a music video um, so it's really up to your preference, but I basically decided to put these little, uh, they're like these little decorations, I, I'm not even sure what they were, I just found it lying around, and they had little lights on it. Anyways, I put them in, kind of close to the camera, uh, turned on those, turned on these, these little blue lights that, that I had, and, uh, and I just threw it out of focus, and this way, it just adds more of this kind of a romantic kind of a feeling, I think, to, to this shot, but another big thing that it adds is just adds the depth to the shot. Uh, there's something you know in the foreground that's out of focus, uh, and it also helps you notice the camera going back and forth a lot more. And here's the final pr product. This is how it looks. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and feel free to email me here on YouTube or leave some comments and let me know what you'd like me to talk about in the next tutorial.